like nothing to do it, Cincinnati. Reckon so. Anything you might have forgotten, Mr. Bryant? Well, if I have, I'll just have to learn to do without it. That's for certain, Mr. Bryant. <laughs> See you next season when we have some more furs to trade. You're always welcome, Daniel. Have a good trip home. Pam? Pam, always good to see you. Bye. I hear tell one of them fellas yonder is uh, Dan Boone. Yep. If you want to talk to him, you'd better hurry. He's leaving town. Oh, I haven't got anything to say to him. I just wonder what he looked like. He was a tall one, a coonskin cap. elbow room left in Kentucky. I think I might head further west one of these days. I think this would be plenty of elbow room for me. I feel a little lonely already. I'd say this neighborhood is a little overpopulated. Whoa, Barney. Hold him just a minute, would you, Brian? Looks like he's got a loose shoe. Jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. You will please state it to the court. We, the jury, find the accused guilty of murder in the first degree as charged. The defendant will arise and face the bench for sentencing. Gordon Jarrett. You have been tried by a jury of your peers and found guilty. Before pronouncing sentence, I ask you again, do you have any next of kin or anyone at all to be notified of the result of these proceedings? Then we have no grounds for delay. At sunrise tomorrow morning, you will be taken from your cell and hanged by the neck until dead. And may God have mercy on your poor soul. The bailiff will remove the prisoner from the courtroom. This court is adjourned. Your fate is sealed, Boone, and my grave won't save you. Terror and disaster will strike your house, and madness be on your head. And in the end, you'll hang. Like me. Uh, 
They don't deserve no marker. He killed an innocent man. Woe unto those who make the innocent suffer. He was just doing what he thought you wanted done, Pa. I told you, Brother Gordon, to find Boone so that we could hang Boone in the full knowledge of his own guilt. But Gordon did in his own way, and now it's Gordon that's hung by his own mistake. Pa, we could all hang for what... Lord protects those who meet out his vengeance, but Gordon didn't do it right. But he sure held up well at the trial, Pa. Never talked, never showed a quiver. And that curse he put on Boone deserves remembering. Aye, and his soul won't be at rest till that curse is fulfilled. Now he's somewhere around us right now, watching us. Don't start talking like that, Pa. It gives me the creeps. Oh, yes. He'll be following and traveling right along with us till that curse is fulfilled. Mm. Not until then shall the righteous rejoice. We shall wash our feet in the blood of the wicked. Come along. Yeah. We'll be heading west by daylight. Dan, that was too close for comfort. Oh, no need to worry, Becky. You never hear the lightning bolt that strikes you. Is that little bit of wisdom supposed to reassure me? <laughs> well, the latch is broken. Can you fix it? Yeah, I'll wedge it with something. Thank you, Israel. Now, I think you'd better get ready for bed. You expect me to sleep with all that going on? Well, at least you can put your nightshirt on. All right. Isn't it a strange time of the year for us to have a lightning storm like this? Oh, uh, maybe a little unseasonable, but it's not unnatural. It's not always expected. Thunderstorm after a long, hot, dry spell. I thought the dry spell was sort of unnatural. Killed about half our corn crop. Well, I could see that since now it's a lie for telling you what that Jared fellow said to me. Well, it makes you think I was thinking about Jared. Weren't you? Maybe I was. I still don't think the man's curse was responsible for our corn crop dying or, or anything. You know, what's had me puzzled is why a total stranger based on Dad sat on killing me. I thought he meant to kill all of you to steal the pack horse. That was the only motive the prosecution could come up with. It came out later at the trial that he'd asked someone in Salem to have me identified. Not Brian or Cincinnati, just me. You think his aim was bad? His aim was perfect. If I hadn't been down to look at that loose shoe, I'd been the one to receive the bolt. Well, crossbow, that's a terrible weapon. Yeah, it's more accurate and more powerful than the ordinary bow, and it doesn't make the noise of a rifle. Oh, can't that shutter be fixed to stay shot? Son, I think you better get back to bed. Harmon, I'm a noodle. 
Don't tell me anything. There's nothing to tell. The storm just made your mother nervous. Come along, Israel. Up to bed. Dan, I know I saw something. All right, Becky, I'm not denying that you saw it. But you were in a mood to see something, whether it was there or not. I didn't imagine it. I think you ought to go to bed, too. I'll stay up for a little while. I can tell you don't believe me. Becky, I'm sure you thought you saw something. But who in Boonesboro would be sneaking around, spying on us on a night like this? It doesn't have to be somebody from Boonesboro. It doesn't even have to be a someone. All right, I'll go out again. I'll get a lantern and look for trucks. Well? Well, it's kind of hard to tell. I was walking around out here a couple of minutes ago myself. Looks like somebody might have been standing right there. Dan? This wasn't here at sundown. Well, at least now we know I wasn't seeing things. I kind of wish you had been. I don't like growlers. Why would anybody hang their watch on a tree and go off and leave it? I don't know. Seems to have some engraving in it. J. Primrose, born June 12, 1752. Hang April 4th. Doesn't give the year. Let's go inside. <laughs> Him. It was about 10 years ago. He had a riverboat. Don't you remember when I took that trip from New Orleans? A couple of other fellows went along. I can't remember their names. Primrose. Who could forget a name like that? Never saw him before or after. Did you have any trouble with him? An argument? No. The only trouble we had was on a night like this, when our boat slipped its mooring and rammed into a raft of logs and been set adrift with a sawmill downstream. Best of my memory, we came close to sinking. Oh, why would this primrose be spying on us? Well, according to this, he wasn't. He was hanged. Like Gordon Jarrett. I wish you'd get that out of your mind, Becky. Just remember this. If anybody had wanted to harm us, they had the perfect chance. With the shutter open, and when we were outside just now with the lamp. There are ways of harming people without shooting them. Well, young lady, you're going to bed and come tomorrow. Well, here's the rain. There goes any chance I might have had a track of him tomorrow. Even the rain seems unnatural now. I want you to remember just one thing. Whoever hung that watch out there was flesh and blood, just like I am. Let's go to bed. caused your paw, so it's right for Boone to suffer. Yeah, look at me all bent and crippled up here before my time. He was too young to share in the other hangings, but you'll be part of this one, and you'll learn what the joy of vengeance can be. Uh, I, think, I think I'll go down into the settlement tomorrow so as I won't miss anything. Oh, that could be dangerous. I could sit in the tents of the wicked and have no fear because I am protected by righteousness. Besides, they won't suspect a thing of a cripple. They don't know that I'm a giant. <laughs> Boom is the last of the 
before. By the week's end, the moon will hang. Mighty strange. Doesn't even seem to be ticking. No. Whoever hung it on that tree didn't part with any treasure. It was intended to mean something, but what? Hanging. Hanging on a tree, huh? Hanging? Well, that's what that Gordon Jarrett said was going to happen to you, Daniel. Since now, will you forget about that Jarrett curse? You've got Rebecca all upset telling her about it. I am sorry about that, Daniel, but when? She just kept asking questions about the trial, and Dad, blame it, it just slipped out. Well, there's nothing to do about it now. And besides, I'm just answering your question about what this watch could mean. Gordon Jarrett is six feet under. And his body is. The name on this watch is Primrose. Well, it was you that caught him and our testimony that convicted him. What do you suppose if somebody was trying to get revenge? Well, as I recall, he said he didn't have any friends or relatives. Dan, I, I just wonder if maybe this is just some harmless prank that somebody is trying to play on you. Well, that could be. Only when it scares my wife half to death, it stops being harmless. And besides, I'm almost certain that I'm the one that Gordon Jarrett intended to kill. Now, you see, Daniel, you're doing the same thing you got sore at me for doing, trying to connect all this with Gordon Jarrett. Since and will you pour me a mug of ale? All right, Daniel. Get it. Start with. I'll be happy to oblige. You. You there at the bar. Yes, sir. Would you care to join me in a drink? I, I'm new here. I'd like to talk to someone. Why not? <laughs> Hi, my name's Stover. Adam Stover. And what is yours? My name's Boone, Mr. Stover, Donald Boone. Mm -hmm. Well, sit down, Mr. Boone. <laughs> is this your first time in Kentucky? Well, I didn't say that. It's the first time here. I've done considerable rafting down the Ohio and the Mississippi. Have you ever been a riverboat man, Mr. Boone? Oh, I've made a few trips down to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. I, I was the best boatman on the river till I got all busted up like this. I was born half horse and half alligator. But you wouldn't understand about that, huh? <laughs> well, there's your rum. Oh, thank you. Landlord, I've got a team just outside the door. Would you have your boy take care of him? Be glad to take care of him myself. You want him watered and fed or just stapled? Stapled. Providing you have got a lodging for me. Well, I got a room and all you can eat for $10 a month, $3 a week, or 50 cents a day. Not too bad, Mr. Stover. Mm, well, I'll take it by the day till I see how long I'm going to be here. All right, I'll see to your horses. Uh, well, I ain't suffering. Uh, landlord, why don't you join us for a drink? <laughs> I'd be mighty obliged. <laughs> uh... Mr. Stover, you mentioned that uh, you were once a boatman. Did you ever know a man named Primrose? Primrose? James Primrose? Must be his initial is J. He was hanged three years ago. That's what it says in this watch that I found. Mm. Uh-uh. Yes, this watch must have once belonged to James Primrose. Do you have any idea what his crime was? Murder. 
Worse than that, he murdered a woman. Now, that's a mighty strange coincidence. We was involved in a murder trial in Salem. Now, a fellow shot down one of our best friends in cold blood. Of course, Daniel caught him, turned him over to the law, but he hanged, too. Commendable. That must make you feel almighty proud, Mr. Boone. There wasn't any pleasure in it. I just did what I had to do. There's always pleasure in vengeance. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Don't you agree with that, Mr. Boone? Well, not always, but you can't have a murderer running around loose. Absolutely right. When the innocent suffer, the guilty must pay. <laughs> yeah, landlord, let's have another drink on that. Hmm? Good idea. You never did tell me what all the excitement was about last night, Mom. Uh, someone was sneaking around the cabin, and all the thunder and the lightning, I got frightened. Doesn't even seem nearly so bad in the clear light of day. Oof. Why didn't Pa track down whoever it was? Rain took care of that. He thought he saw some tracks outside the front window, but they were gone this morning. That sounds like... A cowbell. Oh, the Olsen's cow must have gotten loose again. I'll go fetch it for him. Israel! Don't worry, Mom. There's nothing more peaceful as a milk cow. Hoping to open up a grist mill, if I can find the right place on the river. Pa! Pa! Somebody tried to capture me in a bear trap. A bear trap? Yeah, and they almost did. Look at my jacket. You gotta come quick. Mom's back at the cabin all alone. Uh, Mr. Boone. Yes, sir. My wagon is still right outside. Why don't you use it? Thank you, I will. Yeah. 
nothing. Jared? There's some kind of coincidence. I don't know what it is. There's a where those bear traps. They're straight out. Wait, Dan, there's one more thing. I found this near those bear traps. William Dudley. Hanged. Uh, That's one of the names I couldn't remember yesterday. He was one of the men on the Primrose boat. And they were both hanged. I just met a man named Stover who said he knew Primrose. And he just told me that Primrose was hanged about three years back for the murder of a woman. A woman? That's hard to understand. I remember Primrose as a big, good-natured man. Dan, this man Stover, he may be the one that's doing these terrible things to us. Well, he couldn't have fired that crossbow from back in the tavern. And he's too old and crippled to have set those bear traps. All the same, it's too much of a coincidence to have him show up right after we find that Primrose watch. I think you better go back and have a talk with him, if he's still there. He's still there, all right. That's his rig outside. Now, I want you to go in and pack up clothes for you and Israel. You're going to stay in the fort for a while. I'm going to go out and have a look around. We better pack. Pa's in an awful hurry. You're right, son. Sprung. You were lucky, son. How'd you happen to go out there? I heard some cowbells. I thought Allison's cow might have got loose again. And when he got to the traps, the cowbell stopped. Well, and obviously it wasn't a cow. Somebody was leading you on. They left tracks. I'll see where they lead to when I come back. Come back? Aren't you going to stay at the fort with us? I'm going to make sure that you and Israel are safe. Then I'll come back and clear up this matter. Well, I'm not going to let you come back alone. We'll take Israel to the fort and I'll come back with you. Now, no arguments, Becky. I don't want to worry about anybody but myself. Well, then you bring some of the men back with you. By now, Cincinnati's has got this story all over the fort, and they'll be glad to help. It wouldn't do any good. It seems somebody's trying to kill me, and I want to find out who it is. Well, is that supposed to persuade me to let you come back alone? Don't you see, Rebecca? If I come back surrounded by friends, whoever's trying to get me is just going to lie low and wait. If I come back alone, he'll show himself. How do you know it's a he? It, it may be a half dozen days. I want to talk to that store fellow again. You can argue on the way. Oh, well, I certainly shall. Rebecca, you drive. I want to keep my hands free. Uh, I reckon they must be scared plenty, huh? Just can't take any more of it. Yeah, they're headed for the settlement. Paws a wily one, Leonard Boone is rigged. 
You know, he's going to have Boone eaten out of the palm of his hand, then all of a sudden, the rope. You can see, little brother, you're going to see. Right now, let's get into Boone's cabin so he'll be ready for him when he comes back. No sense wasting this. <clears throat> I'm gonna use it to scare Boone again. I'm gonna tell you there's something supernatural about it. There was no human face that was peering in the window at him. And it was no human hand that hung a dead man's watch on that tree. Well, when you remember that curse, I heard with my own ears. I think you heard that with your imagination, Cincinnatus. Dan, oh. Becky and Israel are going to stay in the fort for a spell. They can put them up. Never any problem. Becky. I guess we may as well go up and unpack. Right up the stairs. I want to thank you for the use of your wagon, Mr. Stover. Oh, well, not at all. Anything to protect the innocent. Everything to destroy the guilty. You mentioned that you, uh, you're James Primrose. Did you ever know of a man named William Dudley? I didn't know him as speaking acquaintances. I don't know murderers, Mr. Boone. I just know of them. I see. Dudley was hanged for murder, too. He was an accomplice of Primrose's. He wasn't hung at the same time because he wasn't caught at the same time. But he was hung all the same. Did you ever run a sawmill? Now, why would you say that? Well, I heard you say something about planning on starting a grist mill, and a grist mill runs on water power, same as a sawmill. So does a spinning mill. You also told me that you'd rafted some logs down to Mississippi. So I just figured maybe the logs that you'd rafted were for your own sawmill. Well, now you got things figured out pretty good, Mr. Boone. <laughs> yes, I, I did start a little old sawmill before the curse of Job come down upon me. Well, if you go ahead with your plans for that grist mill, I think I know the spot for you. And if you're going to be around long enough, I'll show it to you. Where are you going? Well, you must have heard what Cincinnati was saying. I figure I'll be a little healthier if I go off on a hunting trip for a spell. Oh, oh, I see. So I'm going to swing on over to my cabin and pick up some supplies, and I'll be on the way. I'll see you when I get back. I can give you a ride as far as your cabin. I, I'd like to talk to you a little more about that site for the grist mill. Well, fine with me. If you don't mind going a little ways past the cabin, I'll show it to you right now. <laughs> Carter. Yes, that was it. 
Where is he now? Hades, I reckon. The lake of fire and brimstone. And his soul will be tormented there day and night forever and ever and ever. He was hanged, too. Mm -hmm. That is the law. You mentioned that there was a fourth man. Do you recall his name? His name? Well, his name uh, slips my memory just at this moment. It'll come to me most any time now. Throughout the lifeline. There's somebody coming. He's got doom with him. He's bringing him to his own execution. Hey, this is going to be easy. This is going to be real easy. The fourth man on that Primrose boat couldn't possibly have been Jared, could it? Why would you think a thing like that? Because that was the name of the murderer that was hanged in Salem. I think I spoke to you about him. The fourth man ain't been hung yet. Now, Boone, you go on in your cabin, get your pack, then you can show me the spot for the grist mill. I think I'll show you the mill side first. I've got a few things to do here before I leave, and I... I wouldn't want to keep you waiting. Well, I don't mind waiting at all. You just go right ahead and do your chores and take all the time you want. I wouldn't feel right delaying you from the start of your hunting trip. You wouldn't be delaying me at all. Uh, I'd better drive because I know the way and you don't. Now, look here, Boone. I am a stubborn old man kind of set in my ways. Now, you go on in that cabin and get your pack. Now, why is that so important to you, Mr. Stover? It is Stover, isn't it? Get him! Hey. He's running away with Pa. Come on! Wait a minute. They could still see us. Yeah. Oh. Boom! Hold on there. Boom! Where are you going? Boom! Come back here. What? What's got into you, Boom? Someone in my cabinet. I don't know anything about that. The question is, how many? According to the tracks I found nearby, there are at least two, maybe more. What's that got to do with me? That's what I'm hoping you'll tell me. The fellow Jarrett put a curse on me before he was hanged. Looks like somebody's trying to carry it out. Pretty low-bellied snake that would try to lure a small boy into bear traps. I had nothing to do with that. And him that done it shall know my wrath. You know who did it? I only know that the innocent need have no fear of me. I'm not so sure that's true. Let me jog your memory, Mr. Stover. The name of the fourth man on that primrose boat is Boone. Daniel Boone. For some reason, I'm supposed to hang. I reckon that's why I haven't been shot before now. So we're just going to sit here and wait until they come out. I figure I can make a pretty fair leg shot from here. I just hope you're not too fond of them. Ah, uh, kill him. Kill him. Won't be the first time you murdered one of mine. One of yours? Are you speaking of Gordon Jarrett? No. My Gordon killed an innocent man. He deserved what he got. I'm talking about my wife. You helped kill her, Boone, and you made a cripple out of me. And you remember it, too, Boone. It was on a raft in the High River ten years ago. You were on a boat that rammed a barge of timber. I was on that barge, me and my wife and my three boys. The raft broke apart, and there I was in the water getting smashed by the timbers. My wife was drowning, all of us screaming for help. In the hour of our distress, you closed your ears and shut your eyes and turned away. It took me two years before I could walk with the help of thee. Me with three motherless boys to rear. And I swore an oath of God that I would wreck his vengeance. I swore that I would 
hang you off. The curse of Hades with you, Mr. Boone. Travis! Nathan! Come on! Over here! I got him! The vengeance of the Lord is complete. Explain to me why you're hanging me. I recall that night on the river a little better. I repent while you can. And if your repentance is sincere, you still might escape the fires. The fact of the matter is, I don't feel like repenting at all. If you had your family on that raft, there were no lights showing. How come you didn't show any lights? Robert, how's that not coming? You ready in a minute, Paul? It's a stormy night. Our boat was sinking. Even if we'd have known you were there, we wouldn't have been able to help you. So spake the others. The mouth of the wicked is full of deceit, and under his tongue lies iniquity. An accident ten years ago. And you've made killers out of your boys for that. I'm letting them share in the glory of the carrying out of the will of the Lord. Nathan must have started pretty young. Ten years ago, he couldn't have been more than seven or eight. I wasn't in on him, others. I never let a child carry out a man's work. He's a grown-up boy now, and he can share. If he wants to. Nathan, in a minute or two, they're going to put a noose around my neck. If you're in this room when it happens, there's going to be one just like it for your neck when the law catches up with you. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. A jarret doth not flee. I just can't understand why you'd be on that raft without lights. Unless, unless you were stealing it. Stealing it for your own sawmill. That's a lie. Don't listen to him, Nathan. Don't listen to him. Go on. Go on ahead. Is that rope ready? It's ready, Paul. It's been preying on you for a long time. Go ahead. Let's hang him now. <laughs> he can repent while he's dying. Come on, Nate. It's gonna take both of us to hoist him. No. I've had enough of it. You go on. You do as your brother says. No, Pa. I've minded you since the day I was born, but I am a man now. You said that yourself. And I don't have to do it. There is a generation that curses a father and blesses not the mother. All right, go. Go. With your brother's help, as feeble as I am, we can still leave him hanging in his own home. No, you don't. You're going to see this through, Nathan. Stop! Boom!
Babbitt. Now in this day shall the Lord of hosts smite thee for thy folly. I thought I told you to stay at the fort till it was all over. Daniel, you can't expect anyone to mind you when we know you're walking into danger, especially when you wasn't back by nightfall. Well, I don't mind telling you since announced a little while ago, sorry I was so rash. Yeah, well, we should have come sooner. But at least I caught this one trying to escape. Thanks, but you caught the only one you didn't need catching. You can take care of those two. This young fellow's pretty badly hurt. Let me bring Paul and Mr. Boone. He won't cause any more trouble. All right, Nathan. time to hold a hate as big as his. I think I understand why. He knew he was doing wrong, stealing timber meant for other sawmills. And if his wife was killed because of it, oh, he must have had terrible feelings of guilt and remorse. When he couldn't stand it, he just had to have someone else to blame. And proving himself right by punishing them. He seemed like such a general old fellow to me. When did you start suspecting him, Daniel? Oh, when Becky first pointed out that he had to be involved in some way. And you insisted on going off alone with him and letting them capture you? No, now, Becky, I had them captured. The old man had confessed everything. I had the boys covered. It was easy as pie. Then what went wrong? Overconfidence. And that's exactly what I said all along. <laughs> I made the mistake of forgetting that a fanatic never, ever gives up. Well, at least one good thing came out of your mistake. You opened the eyes of his youngest son. That I did. And I'm looking forward to closing mine and a good night's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. 